Awesome. All right. Crazy faith. You going to read this? Okay. Get it. Live it. Live it. Get it. Receive it. That's right. You got to receive that. So cool. What's your name? Portia? Beautiful. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Portia, what a name. Lord, we thank you for Portia, and we will uh, take a Portia. Lord, I'll take a Porsche. Por is it Portia or Porsche? Okay, thank you, Jesus. We receive new automobiles in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Tiffany, thank you for that. I did not expect that, and she's just awesome. If you don't know Brandon and Tiffany, they're our kids' pastors, and they, they are in the pizza business. They're in the Papa Murphy's pizza business. So I know. They're just like... They're pizza people? Aren't we all? <laughs> so anyways, they're uh, business people and ministry people. We just love them. And uh, you'll, you'll get to know them if you don't. Um, just to be clear, if you write me a check, which uh, whatever. Um, it, so tithes, the reason we say tithes is because it's a biblical thing that God put into motion in every covenant. The Bible specifically says return the tithe. The reason you return the tithe is because he says it's already mine. Sort that out with God. That's not my opinion. That's the Bible. So the Bible says, okay, that's mine. And so that's when the first 10%, why? Because God wants your best. Not what you determine is his best. Have you ever determined, what's my best? God defines it as first. So the best is the first. Why do you think we're people of Sunday? Because it's the best day. Why is it the best day? It's the first day. He said, give me your morning. Why? Because it's the best. It's the first. So he defined, priority is first. Whoever you make that call, who's on your, when you get hurt, you know, in the hospital, who you, who's that, that phone call? That, that phone call is, his, is, is he says, I want that phone, I want to be the first person you call. And so wh whether you're on the mountain or the valley, don't get me preaching tithe here this morning. I don't usually preach tithe. But just to be clear, the theology behind it is you are returning it, saying, God, I thank you for giving me all of the 100, here is the 10, the best, the first, would you bless the rest of the 90? Now, in that 90%, if you want to give what is called an offering, I don't want your tithe. <laughs> that goes to the storehouse, okay? An offering is above and beyond that. So if your if you're first 10.1%, you want to kick it? That's great. Thank you so much. So tithes and offerings, just to be clear. Amen. I just lost the whole crowd. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the Bible. Thank you. Thank you for honoring. And uh, I just am sometimes just so giddy every Sunday that people come here to church, honestly. And uh, having seen God build a church out of our house is pretty incredible. And yet to also believe that we are just getting started because we have a vision to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Where do you start? First, Jerusalem. Jeru Salem. That is this. That is where we live. We're going to do mission trips. They're ends of the earth. Okay. Jude J Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaritan, and the, and the whole earth. And so our vision is this city. Amen. Are you a sinner or a saint? Are you a sinner? Johnny, are you a sinner or a saint? Uh, that's right answer. Right answer. That's what I want to talk about this morning. You ready? All right, get ready, get ready, get ready. Nudge your neighbor and uh, say, get ready for the word of God. If you were to define this church, I would just appreciate it if you would properly represent us. And uh, when, when the blind man got touched, what did he say? The Pharisees were trying to box in Jesus because that's what people will do. They'll sound like they want answers from you. Hey, what kind of church is it? But what they're trying to do probably, I know I'm stepping over into some ground here, but what they might be doing is boxing it in so they don't have to come. Because when you can stereotype something, you can control it. And when you can control it, you control the narrative and go, oh, that kind of church is not for me. I don't have to go. So what they did is they said, hey, blind man, what kind of, which is, is Jesus a prophet? Is he, is he, is he? and the blind man's like, I don't know. All I know is I was blind. Now I see. Just do that when you talk about this church. <laughs> you say, hey, they're charismatic, not our neighbors, are preordained, pre post apostolic. Don't use all the words nobody knows about, anyways, except if you've got a PhD in theology, which this is what only David does. So you can just say, you know what? All I know is I was heavy. I walked in and I see. A burden got lifted off. All I know, just get that down and understand this. Our church isn't just about talking about religion. It's about experiencing Jesus. So when you come in here, we are trying to actually receive what we believe. So I'm not trying to just talk about faith. I'm trying to get some faith. I need to get what God's trying to give me. Did you know that Christianity is the only religion that talks about a God that does things for them? 
every religion is Buddha, I give you my life and this incense, you know. Every other religion is we're all just trying to serve God. We're like the only ones. We're like, God save me. God, we are the only people that talk about what God did for us. Every other religion is talking about what we can do for God. And at the crux of Christianity is the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Why? Because it's the only God, sorry, that came and rescued me, saved me, and healed me and transformed me. That's why we're so happy. Even surrounded by tough situations. All right, are you ready? You ready, you ready, you ready? Genesis 21, let's get into it this morning. I feel some faith in the room. With everything, with everything. I just do that so you don't feel like a fool. The greatest fool in this place is me. So please be released to celebrate Jesus and get what you need to get this morning. Amen. I give you full, full authority to get hungry and thirsty for the seed, for the word of God. Amen. Even if you did some crazy sin last night, there's grace in this place. There's no condemnation to those who are in Jesus. Just receive Jesus, repent, restart, renew, refresh, get some revival, and here you go. You ready? All right, you're ready. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah, I will preach it, as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. Speak, visit, do. Speak, visit, do. Do. That's a divine order of scripture. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time. What? The set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore. You see the repetition? Whom Sarah, because the scripture wants to be clear that this is not Ishmael. Someone say, Isaac is not Ishmael. Who he had spoken. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made me laugh. Did you know that the blessings of God are so big and so awesome, it ought to make you laugh? Like, <laughs> woo, wow. She also said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son at his old age. Verse 8, so the child grew and was weaned. Someone say weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the same day. Wow. That Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, scoffing. Therefore, she said to Abraham, cast out this bondwoman. She had already tried this before. Cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son. Before she was wrong, but now she is right. Namely, with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing to Abraham's sight because it was his son. Isaac blessed the covenant and Ishmael is his redeemed story. Some of us are so connected to the redemption of our story and our Ishmael that we have a problem putting it away or having a problem with God putting it away in the proper order that it is. But it's still so much of who I am. Am I a sinner? Am I a saint? But God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac, someone say Isaac. In Isaac, your seed shall be called. We've been talking about tithing this morning, kind of, sort of, impromptu. So don't call Ishmael your non-tithing tithing. Now, just because you got a million dollars and you're awesome and you're wonderful and your life is happy, that's fine. That's called redemption, sovereignty, grace, and mercy. But don't call my covenant. My covenant does not come through your Ishmael. Are you ready for this? This is, I know this is, this is a lot this morning. It's like two, two hours. We're still theologi theologizing upstairs with some people because the Ishmael and the Isaac thing is so, so it's this. It's, it's this. And just for teachability, I have to, do this and 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 it's complicated because God loves me 
and he's holy. <sighs> so I won't talk about that this morning. It's no big deal. There's no big deal. It's no big deal. Cast her out. Do not let your seed so big. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman because he is your seed. So God does care about your Ishmael. But he, the blessing, the blessing comes through Isaac. All right. Help! I've got an Ishmael. That's what I want to talk about this morning, all right? Help! I've got an Ishmael. You got an Ishmael. I've got an Ishmael. Ishmael! Ishmael. All right. Jesus, that's the, that's the people who, you know, shalom. It's shalom. You know, it's, yeah, okay. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for church. We thank you for your word. God, we thank you that we are just mere humans. They're just, I'm just going to use words of an English language, but hopefully that you would use them to bring about the logos, the rhema, the word. Jesus, you are the word become flesh. That's what we need. We don't need any more of me. We need you. We don't need any more keys and melodies and songs. We need heaven to come into this place. Lord, we just want you. And where they where the humanity drifts and merges with divinity, we don't know. But we know we are dependent upon you. And you have asked us, God, to mix to mix the hearing, Lord, that we hear with some faith. God, that you might do what only you can do. And everybody said, amen. amen. All my sinners said, amen. amen. All my saints said, amen. a few less saints. Okay, I got my work cut out. I got my work cut out. So this last week, I... Um, or actually, well, I don't know if it was this week before, but I, I get up to pray, and uh, I get up to pray, and I, I get my worship music going. I'm praying, and I, I, I'm having a good time. Not to, not, not to, like, toot my own horn, but God's so, so good. Amen. Like, literally, all you have to do is drag your raggedy old backside out of bed, put yourself up on a couch, drink some coffee, push play, and literally just say, thank you, Jesus, and boom. Like, that's it. Like, it baffles me that people don't pray because it's literally, actually, it's really, 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 really easy. He's very gracious. You don't, have to, you don't have to have witchcraft and conjure up a spirit. You just go, Lord, I love you. Poof. You're like, whoa, ho. So heaven falls. I'm in my prayer time. I'm interceding. I'm repenting. I'm just doing it all. And I'm just like, whoo. Then it's 720, and that's when I got to take the boys to school. And so I was having such a good prayer time. I didn't get to comb my hair or get dressed. I just was like sweatpants, T-shirt. I didn't even know what's, what's what do I? I didn't even, oh. So then we get in the car, and then that's why I give the keys to Jude <sighs> to drive. And the destiny of this church in my life is in His hands. Amen. Pray for us around seven twenty Monday through Friday. Amen. We need angels, <laughs> angels. He's a good lad, but he's, he's unfortunately learning the skills of driving on Highway 14. And so we got this little Jetta, and, and we're not going to win the fight against the big Mack truck with all the logs. Amen. It's just math. It's just math. It's just not going to, it's not going to work out in our favor. And so, um, you know, we're just praying a lot and just believing. I'm like, hold on, buddy. And sometimes, dude, you know those bumpers, like on bowling, and you throw the ball, and bing, bing, bing. That's kind of how he drives. It's like from one line, I love you, buddy, from one line to another. It's like, oh, 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 oh. but when the Mack truck comes, like he, we're like heading over to the white line. The problem with Highway 14 is the white line is the ditch right next to it. So it's like, hold on, bud. So when the car and the ditch come, we just close our eyes and just go, Lord. We give you the wheel, whatever that song is, right? Lord, we just give you the wheel. Lord, how's that song go? Jesus, take the wheel. All right, all right. So, Jesus, take the wheel, and we and we're just there's, it's it's like driving with Jude on the way to school is like Lord of the Rings, right? We say like we got to get past Mordor and the orcs, and there's just there's journeys. It's the journey. It's not just driving to school. It's it's a journey. We got to get past them, you know, the the minefield, and we got to get past all the arrow. And then we got to get past the turn. And then someone wants to pass us. And that's a whole other thing. Because you're like, hold on, buddy. Just slow down. It's okay. It's okay. Then the cars get behind us. And then we come down. And there's road construction on the way to Washougal High School. And we have to get all these turns. And then there's a cop down there. Hold on. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Yeah. This is the 20. Okay. Okay. And he's sweating. He just sweat. I'm not, So you got to correct him, but you got to also direct him. And then you also got to encourage him, right? You got you to be a good father. Good job, buddy. And then you don't know when you're lying and when you're teaching and when you're correcting. That's <laughs> okay. So they, okay. Okay. Get there. Okay. The buses are all coming in. And then we get around to the circle. And uh, I'm not using words right now. I'm just thinking. So sorry. And then I'm just still stressful. Pray for my healing. And then we get in there. 
We get to the roundabout, and then we, we made it. We all just get out of the car, and we just go, thank you, Jesus. We're still alive. Right? That's our daily ritual. We're just very thankful that we got to school. And I often feel like a bad parent because I'm teaching my kid to drive on Highway 14, which probably isn't fair for any of us. And uh, I might not be here next Sunday, so I love you. Um, it's been nice. No. So we get there. And then the kids get out, and they're, you know, Jude's playing tennis, and Trent's playing golf, and so we got to get all the gear out. And, and the funny thing is, I, I don't deal with a lot of fear, man, and insecurities. I deal with, a, like, probably a 2 out of 10 is, is how I think of it, sometimes a 3, sometimes a 1. But I got out of my car, and I just realized, again, I had not gotten ready, and my, I just was, like, a, looking a little frumpy, you know, yeah. And so I, I, I get out, and it's like, all of a sudden, the cars start to line up, Trent's you know, getting his golf bag and Jude's getting his, and I'm like, again, I'm like, all right, guys, speed this up. You guys done? Okay. Then we switch seats and I, I come over to the driver's side and then Trent pulls out his golf bag and all these golf balls get released into the circle, right? So then the parents are lining up and for some reason I am getting a little stressed out, you know? I'm like, okay. So then I'm picking up golf balls in the middle of the court and I got my sweatpants and these ones kind of dip down a little bit. So I might be showing a little plumber, plumber's crack, and then I, I'm, like, trying to pull up my pants and pick up golf balls and, like, sorry, you know, our bad. I'm a little bit embarrassed. The boys get their stuff. I get back in the car. I cruise around, and I get to the four-way stop. Isaac, when's this story going to end? Right here, right now. <sighs> so I'm just recovering from the whole thing. <sighs> and then there's this car, and we happen to pull up to the four-way stop at the same time, right? So you, like, you pull up. I'm a Christian. Right? Of course. I'm not going to be a, a jack butt and pull out and just be like, I got my activate sticker, you know. Put on the fake smile and. But sh they don't go. So what do you do? You're like, you wait like a second and then you're like, you, you, then you start going. Then they start going at the same time. And you, then you stop. Because you don't want to be the jerk. Because I've been the person that thought I knew what that person wanted and I went out and they like honked. You know, you're like, Doing my best. I kid you not. We wait, you wait, you wait. You're like, are they going to go? They're not going. You're like, I'm going to go. And then they go. And you. I don't know what it is about three lunges at a four-way stop, but take me home, Jesus. It's just, it's just something in me. Just, And it's not even anger towards that person. It's just frustration. When things don't work, I just get frustrated. Why isn't this working? Right? Just getting mad. I'm sitting there and I, the person goes, sorry. And I, and I'm driving. And I see the cop again. And I'm like, fine, slow down. 20 miles an hour. <laughs> then there's a road construction and the sign and the bus and the person behind me is creeping right up on me. And I don't have any room to go. And I'm like, I can't go. I, what do you want? And it baffles me that I was just in the presence of God and now I want to burn the world to the ground and say, good riddance, Sodom. Good riddance, Gomorrah. I did what I could. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? What do you want? And I don't like that my Ishmaels and my Isaacs are so close. I don't like that my worship and my anger share the same table. I don't like it, but this is the picture of Abraham. This is the feast that he's having. He's got a table, and he's got his Isaac, and he's got his Ishmael, and everyone's all there, all of the dysfunction. All, everyone is together, and this is what God wanted. He wanted all of my, all the things birthed of my flesh, and all the things birthed of the spirit, are all hanging out. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like my Ishmaels and my Isaacs eating together. I want my Ishmaels like in China. And I want my Isaacs right here. Like I don't want anybody to, I, I don't want my, 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 I don't want my fear. I don't want my pity party right next to my praise party. I want to pretend that they've never met. <laughs> I, I want to pretend they don't even know each other. I want to pretend it never happened. 
I just want to move on, say, I'm never going to do that again, and just say, praise the Lord, going to be awesome, going to, going to, going to, right? Just going to, going to, going to, going to. I'm just working on it. I'm trying. I'm just figuring it out. I don't want them to all be at the same dinner party. I don't, I don't, I just, I just, I don't want all my, you know, God's perfect plan hanging out with my, he works all things together for my good. I don't want my sin next to my grace. I don't, I don't want it. I don't want it at the same table. But this is the big dysfunctional picture that represents all of our lives. That everything we've done and everything he's done is all sitting all up inside this dinner table. You are the dinner table. This is a picture of your life. <coughs> and what's difficult about this, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is the fact that God loves me and he forgives me. And he washes me. Amen. That ought to be good for you, Johnny. You're a sinner. And he loves you. And he forgives you. And he washes you. And he cleanses you. And he washes you. And he cleanses you. And he renews you. And he forgives you. And his mercies are new every morning. And his grace is sufficient. And, and he loves me. And yet he calls me. He calls me according to his promise. I, the gospel is, is the hope for every sinner, and yet at the same time, it is the power of God unto salvation. If it's unto salvation, that means the power of God is trying to pull me into something. And so the children of Israel are a picture of this, that, that God brought them out. But they were not able to get in. Why? Because they could not understand that something had to take place in them in order for them to possess. That possession would not be automatic. I've got an Ishmael and I've got an Isaac. And then Ishmael starts mocking Isaac. Ooh, we got a problem. So what does this tell me? That my Ishmael is not Isaac. My Ishmael... My lack of prayer is not Isaac. But he, he, he forgives me and he washes me and he cleans me. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Unto what? Unto truth that sets me free. Into what? Into something. Actually into a life of prayer. Into a life of tithes and offer. Into a life of preaching the gospel. In, he, he, he say, no, 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 don't call. Don't call. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I know I'm big. I know I'll wash you from every sin. But don't call your sin Blessed. Yeah. It's tough. This is, you ready for this? This is, this is going to be a bumpy road here. This is, uh, don't call, don't call your lack of prayer, prayer. But that's what we do. He loves me. He forgives me. He washes me. He sanctifies me. He's sovereign. Yeah, because he is God. So, so he will not leave you nor forsake you. So that's why anytime you call upon his name, a shower after sin in your car, he's sovereign, he's awesome, he's God. But don't call a thriving, potent relationship with his word and his, and his spirit in the morning in Ishmael. Don't call what you do and what you birth and what he redeemed his ultimate best prophetic proclamation over your life. Don't call your Ishmael and Isaac. And we see this, one of the most clearest things I've ever seen as a youth pastor is when you go preach on purity to a youth group. I, I never realized this, but I show up and be like, hey, I'm going to preach about sexual purity tonight. <laughs> the whole place. Because like, basically you're saying, I'm going to talk about how much all of you suck. Everyone over 15, because I start preaching about God's plan, about God's best, because we do believe in truth, right? And yet we're hum, human, and we have this human experience of failure that he redeems. And he goes, I can handle your Ishmael. We're going to talk about that in a second. But don't, but don't call your lack of church for a decade in Isaac. Let's be clear. It's an Ishmael. I'm going to heal it. I'm going to renew it. I'm going to restore it. I'm going to use it. I love it, and you love it. It's all beautiful. It's all wonderful, but it's not Isaac. So everyone comes up to the altar call, and I'm just praying for people. I'm just, it's okay. I know. I know you smoked it and did it and talked it. and I know. I know. I know. Come here, Grace. He loves you. He so loved the world. He gave his son. 
no, wa- just wash, there's weeping. It's all right, God's got you. And then again, over here, all the 14 year olds going, What? I've never touched a girl. It's like, that's okay, man. That's right. That's awesome. And they feel like weird about it. No, no, it's good. It's a good thing. It's okay. Yeah. Just keep your zipper up and give your life to God. It's going to rain. And they're just like, okay, cool, man. I'm a virgin. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and like, and it got complicated because I'm like, okay, okay, but you don't even really know what I'm talking about because you don't know temptation yet. So, um, and you're in a culture of this is normal. And 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 you see what the conundrum? So basically, every time we talk about the standard, everybody feels all bummed out about it. But we're not trying to do that. We're trying to say, no, no, Ishmael's not Isaac, and Isaac's not Ishmael. That's it. That's all we're saying. Is God can heal and renew. He loves you. He's washing. He's covering. He's got you, sinner. He's got me. We've all fallen short. No, he can handle every Ishmael you got. He's got your divorce. He's got your ruin. He's got the gossip. He's got the anger. He's got the poverty. He's got you. He's got you. But don't call that the covenant blessing of God. Don't call your redeemed plan God's plan. And this was Abraham's struggle. Because even after Ishmael, even after all the chaos and the crazy, we see in Genesis, we see in Genesis 17, verse 17, that Abraham fell on his face and laughed in his heart. Shall a child be born to me? Is purity, is prayer, is prosperity, is a fresh new marriage, is a redeemed family, is ministry really for me? See, at some point in your life, you will think it's over for whatever reason. So he's 90 years old, and Abraham says to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. This is Abraham saying, God, just bless my Ishmael. Let's just call my Ishmael Isaac. And God says, No. <laughs> no. Yeah, but God, you're so good. And you're so awesome. And you brought, I tried to kick Ishmael out, and you're the one that brought him back. You're the one that healed this thing. You're the one that restored. You're the one that touched my heart. You're the one that delivered me from drugs. You're the one that saved me. You're the one that caused me to believe in you. So I'm simply sharing my testimony and my story by telling everybody what you did. And God said, tell the story straight. That I will renew. I'm bigger than any Ishmael. I'll heal you. You can't out me. You can't. You can't out-Ishmael me. God says, bring Ishmael home. I'll heal, restore, renew. But when you tell your kids what to do, you need to understand that you went through a lot of pain that they don't have to go through. So tell them God will heal your Ishmael and only he can birth an Isaac. There's a difference. What we do is like, so we just become Buddhist hippies that just go, hey, I go to church, but you don't have to. And really, it doesn't matter who you sleep with. It doesn't matter if you do drugs. And it doesn't matter because Ishmael's are Isaac's. So what do we do? We just encourage each other. Just try to pray. And I don't know, man. Try not to have an affair. You know what I mean? Good luck, though, because it's tough out there. A lot of cougars. You work in insurance? Good luck. Do you know we used to say Godspeed? That's how, that's how pagan we become as a society. Even Christians say good luck. Here's a horseshoe. Rather than Godspeed, that everything is in God's hands. That's why we used to say God bless and Godspeed. Because it was like, ooh, only God. Only God. But we've become so humanistic that we've said, I can do whatever I want. Because God is so good. And he is good. But don't call my redemption don't call my healing my best. That's all he, that's his, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 now you're in my territory. Get back, get back. But Abraham struggled. Call my Ishmael, Isaac. What, I, what, what, what Abraham had to deal with is what we have to deal with right now. Is you have to, you have to identify your Ishmaels, what you've birthed or what someone else has birthed in the flesh. And God says, come home. Bring them home. No, I want them to leave. No, I want them to come home. I want your Ishmaels to come home. You've sent your Ishmaels away because it's embarrassing. You'd rather just move on. 
You know all those things you don't want to talk about? I don't want to talk about those right now. I don't want, that's your, probably your Ishmael. <laughs> How to know if you have an Ishmael. We'll do that next week. <laughs> How to know if, you, if you're a redneck. Like, you just, because some of us are just like, we've been telling our, our Ishmaels that they're Isaacs for so long. We actually are almost telling people to do drugs and not go to church and not tithe and not pray. Because look at me. God has blessed me. So you don't have to do any of those things. It doesn't matter. And we have ripped truth right out of its power. Because we haven't identified an Ishmael and Isaac. And only the blessing. He will not bless disobedience. The blessing comes through covenant. So Abraham had to. And this is difficult. Ishmael's coming home. Say to yourself, Ishmael's coming home. Ishmael's coming home. And so Abraham had to stand with an Ishmael and say, I'm still a man of faith. That's difficult to do. I'm still a servant of God. Um, I'm still blessed. I'm still called. I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to worship. I'm not going to walk around. I'm not going to walk around with a pity party. I'm going to stand on faith. I'm going to stand in faith. But we want the ideal feast. We want the ideal Christmas party. I don't want my Hagar and I don't want my Ishmael to show up. How would you tell your story if you knew you were in the Bible? Would you give up on faking it and pretending and lying? If you just knew your story was going to be the Bible, you'd be like, all right, fine, well, let it all just hit the fan. Let's just get it all out. Let's just talk about it. Could you imagine if you'd had relationships where you could be 100% honest? Just... <laughs> I'm just going to tell you what it is. <laughs> I want ideal. I don't want, I don't want Ishmael at my dinner party. I don't want Isaac and Hagar and her servants and Sarah. It's complicated. It's dysfunctional. I can't handle it. Go away. God's like, nope, nope. Bring it home. I don't like my way and God's way to be together. I don't like, I don't like my Jesus in a manger. I don't like my Paul having been a Saul. I don't like my Peter having been a Simon. I don't like my rock. He's the rock. He's the rock that started the church, and yet he, Simon is a reed. I, I don't like it. I don't like the sinner and the saint. I'm just kind of my sinner, and I'm trying to be a saint. I goes like, get them all together. No, 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 no. You got to learn something here. Get them all together. Get all your insecurities and all your prophecies together. No, 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 I want to do my insecurities at the altar at camp 10 years ago. And I only want to talk about my prophecies right now. Look at my prophecies, look at my prophecies, look at my prophecies. And God will say, I want you to write down your insecurities. And I want you to write down your prophecies and get them all together the next time you're at the altar. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Ishmael is mocking Isaac. Your Ishmael is mocking your Isaac. You might look at me as not being good enough. This church might not be good enough. Your spouse not, your kids might. The problem is it's really anything that, no one can make you angry. I know that's a tough pill to swallow. I know that's probably idealistic. But they only bring out what's already in you. So most people are just bringing out the fact that your Ishmael is mocking your Isaac. That's, that's the struggle. It's because you know what you birthed in the flesh. I know what Ishmaels I birthed in this church. And I know what Isaacs were birthed in this church. And I don't want to look at that. I don't like that my Ishmael is mocking my Isaac, especially when my Isaac is weaned. What is weaning? It's the process of taking the child off the mother's breast, the milk. The milk. It's a dependence stage. So Isaac was ready to throw the feast because he'd gotten through the, the, the hardest years of development, which is when a baby is, is just a baby. And, and there's, there's things that a baby could, because they're just so dependent. You have to just care for them. Well, some of us are children. And so every bit of seed that gets birthed in Isaac often dies before it's weaned. You want to get the seed of the word. you got to get that child, that faith growing, and you weaned off of the milk and on to the, when a child is weaned, it just means they can eat for themselves. And so your Isaac has got to be able to be self-sustained and not just hooked on somebody else. Thank you for the parents, mentors, coaches, teachers, and books. But at some point, i got to be able to be self-sustained so I can get my own food. Am I preaching to anybody? Yeah. 
I, I got to get it. I got to get it for me. I got to be able to eat. And so the process of when we move in our flesh is we go, okay, we birth, a, we birth an Ishmael because we get tired of waiting for God. We get tempted. We get tired. What, whatever are the reasons that we sin, the Bible says actually we get tempted from the outside, but what it does is it brings up that sin. It tempts us from the inside. That's why God can't tempt you because he's not, he's not evil. But God will, so that temptation pulls up, and then, and, then we, and, then we, and then we sin, and we say, hold on, I want to get this Ishmael out of here. Get, get this Ishmael out of here. Here, and we send it away, and God says, bring it home. Bring it home. Some of you are right here right now. You've got to bring your Ishmael home because your past is like a child that needs to be taken care of. And the reason you can't move on to your Isaac is because you're still stuck with saying, get, get out of here, Ishmael. I want my Isaac. And God tells Abraham, bring him home. You can't just, oh, sorry, I wish, no. I can handle your Ishmael. I can handle it. I can handle it. Bring it home. I need you to take care of it. I need you to hold it. I need you to raise it. I need you to feed it. I need you to understand it. I need you to take care of it like a child. Could you imagine if you took care of your insecurities and your fears and your decisions? I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. Because as long as you go, well, this was Sarah's idea. I mean, I know I slept with her, but this was Sarah's idea. <sighs> if you keep getting caught up in that, you'll never, you'll never take care of your Ishmael, and you'll never get an Isaac. You'll just be angry and blaming everybody for being worse than you. So God goes, I'm in charge here. Bring, out, bring, 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 bring Ishmael back. I can handle your Ishmael. I can handle it. It's time to face it. It's time to take care of it. It's time to stop running for it, from it. When God brings Ishmael back to Abraham's life, we don't see God speak for 13 years. <laughs> that tells me the difficulty that Abraham had in bringing his Ishmael back. So, so don't underestimate how long it's going to take for you to get a hold of the Ishmael that you birthed in your marriage or your family or your life. It's a big deal to bring that thing home and say, God, I'm not running any longer. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to learn, God, to, to really move through this and allow you to speak and help me manage and maneuver and to take care of this situation. 13 years. And Abraham was a bad dude. Awesome. Wealthy. Political. Military. Successful. Anointed. It took him 13 years to figure that out. God goes, bring it home. Bring it home. Let's take care of this. But see, some of us, it's the, it's the hardest thing because during this 13 years, we get so used to His grace because His grace is sufficient and His grace abounds over every sin. And so we drink of the grace. His mercies are new. His mercies are new every morning. Every morning you wake up, it's a fresh glass of mercy. His shower of grace and mercy. His love, His love never fails. His love never runs out. His love never grows tired. His love is kind. His love, He is 1 Corinthians 13. His love. And so what happens is we go, God is so good. He's so awesome. Oh. And then we call our Ishmael's Isaac because of the goodness of God. Because of his mercy. We say, wow, this is awesome. He washed me. He cleansed me. I was a sinner. I was horrible. But he met me. He spoke to me. He touched me. He renewed me. So amazing. And God goes, it's awesome. That's your Ishmael. It's part of your life. I've renewed. I've touched. And now I'm going to give you Isaac. And Isaac is where the blessing comes through. Some of us have only experienced the, the washing of God, and it's awesome. Some of us have only experienced the restoration of hope after we failed, and it's awesome. Some of us have only experienced the renewal of hope when we've lost all hope, and it's, it's awesome. God said, yeah, that's what I do. With your Ishmaels, I'm God. There's no Ishmael that I can't touch, heal, renew. You can't out-Ishmael my grace. And so we go, yes.
God is good. Doesn't matter what I did. Doesn't matter if I was in prison. Doesn't matter if I lost my mind. Doesn't matter if I, what I, God is bigger than anything I can do. Oh, He's awesome. Oh, He's amazing. And then God comes and says, okay, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because you've not experienced yet my blessing that comes through covenant. If you thought I was good with your lack of prayer and I show up and speak to you and I throw my angels around about you and I surround you with a cloud of witnesses and I drop a message into Isaac's heart to get you and I happen to put someone sitting next to you that'll pray for you. If you thought I was that good with your Ishmael, get ready by what I can do through an Isaac. When you take a moment and you begin to pray and go to church and read your Bible and forgive and renew your mind and let the Word of God begin to get rooted and weaned in your life, God said, oh, I bring my blessing through I Don't call an Ishmael a covenant son of God. Where'd you get that Isaac from God? Where'd you get that Ishmael from me? It's so powerful. Restoration, forgiveness, and salvation is so powerful that we get stuck in our Ishmael phase. And you say, my God's been so good to me. I turned my back on him. I raised my kids a little wonky. I never invested the right money. I was always in debt. We're always sick. Life is crazy. And you'll go, but look what God did. And God's like, yeah, because I renew Ishmael. Bring him home. I'm big enough to heal. I'm big enough to restore. But understand that there's more. Someone shout more. God said, I've got more blessing. I know that you've experienced my renewal and my rest restoration, but you've not experienced what I can build from the ground up through Isaac, through my seed. Okay, so Hagar, Ishmael come home. 13 years, conferences, church. Some of you are in this phase. You're just like dealing with your Ishmaels and your marriage and your, and your finances on your team and your businesses. You're just, come on, God. Ishmael is throwing rocks at Isaac. Hagar's fighting with Sarah. Help! I got an Ishmael. Help! I got an Ishmael. Abraham maneuver, strategize. You mix families. Whew, that's an Ishmael. Okay, we got to talk or practice with I'm not his dad, but she's not his mom. And, oh, Lord, help us. And we got finances and schedules. And I got your past and my past. Carrie's got some Ishmaels. I got some Ishmael. Oh, that's your Ishmael. So we have this, we have this Ishmael called I don't have to go to church and God loves me. Yes. Yes. But the blessing of revival and renewal and the restoration of the church will come through the bride. Jesus said, I will build my church. And so we got to call the sons and daughters back home and say the blessing will come in the house of God. Come, gather, pray. He can handle your Ishmael. Come home. He can handle you. Come home. This isn't just a gym. This is a hospital. Come home and be healed. We are a, we are a church of God can handle your Ishmaels. Yeah, but I've been divorced three times. Oh, you need to get out of here. Sorry. He can only handle some Ishmaels. Unless there's a warrant out for your rest. Honestly, this is real talk. And you've done things to kids. You're welcome. Everything else we'll have to deal with you and the state. And it's third party. It's even more complicated. I don't even know why I'm bringing this up. But I'm just having a real talk with my church right now. Because I'm serious about protecting kids and people. If there's something in your life that has to be dealt with, we got to deal with it. We're not, we're not here to fake it. But basically, everyone else, this is your house. Come. We have to beckon the Ishmaels and say, God can handle it. But we're not going to call all that Ishmael and Isaac. You want to send Ishmael away. God says, nope. You got to take care of him like a child because you birthed him in the flesh. God doesn't just wink at things. No, 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 no. No, he has a process. Bring it home. 
here's what sends your Ishmael away is Isaac is birth through the word of God anything in your life your salvation is not yours it's his he birthed it through his word it's his your mind renewed it's because of him the Holy Spirit in you is because of him the connection that you have with believers all around the world is because of him the joy that you have is because of him if you call an Ishmael Isaac then you're telling some believers that don't have a church that they can get their joy if they just stop sinning or if they just do these three things that's not true joy comes through Isaac joy comes through salvation joy comes through the word joy comes through an Isaac it's a covenant blessing so Isaac was weaned he could eat for himself that is when God says you can send Ishmael away so it's not me that sends my Ishmael away it's my Isaac it's 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 the work of God that's about two three four years old not hooked on milk but it can eat for itself that sins the promises my faith is old enough my worship is old enough my prayer is old enough my attitude is old enough my preach is old enough my praise is old enough my renewed mind is old enough oh my 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 gifting and my character is old enough my repentance is old enough my preach is old enough to begin to send my past away it's God that sends my shame my guilt my complication away I want to send my laziness my apathy away but it's God through his promise that when the seeds of prayer and the seeds of worship start to cultivate it's that that sins my past and my flesh it's holiness it's separation unto God hear me young people I'm telling you God's honest truth I'm not strong enough to go up against sexual sin I don't know why second service is a little more heavy but it's real you can't send your Ishmael away you'll need an Isaac in your spirit you need the seeds of holiness we're not saying it got to be 50 years old it's got to be about two or three years old that's why you got to come to church that's why you got to worship the only chance we have because we've got a direct access into our lives into our minds into our hearts the only way you can walk in purity or faith or holiness is you got to have the seeds of an Isaac inside of you to be able to deal with your Ishmael it's your Isaac the handles because there's a mockery level because your past even though you've taken it in and you've taken care of it and you've held on to it at some point you want to be fully 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 a part of the new so it's Isaac the mocking level the reason you can't get some of you get your faith to about two three you get a wing but the mocking the mocking gets to you do you notice oh, it's too much do you notice that Sarah's like we got to do this we got to do this but she was wrong before but she's right now oh, Abraham but then now he got so addicted to his story some of you are so addicted to restoration that all you want to talk about is how good God was to you that's awesome but this is now time that he's birthing something better something bigger I know you love to tell the story about what you used to do and what God did some of you are so stuck in the recovery group or the or the or the small group or the renewal or the church ministry of the past that you can't even understand right now that your Isaac is trying to get you to move on and cut ties with that story that you've told for so long and God said I'm birthing 
something new says the Lord get ready get ready get ready I'm about to establish my promise I'm about to establish my new I'm about to establish something I'm about to establish my kingdom in you I got one more thing I got one more thing so the moment it's the hardest moment the hardest moment is I got people in my office at the end of their life at times and they're weeping because they were never able to handle their Ishmael which never really allowed them to have an Isaac because they do what all of us are doing keep calling Ishmael Isaac and we're stuck and they're weeping young people hear me they're weeping in my office and it breaks my heart because it is too late. And I hold them and I cry. And what do we do? We talk about heaven. <laughs> why? Because it's real. It's why I preach the way I preach to young people. To see, of course, God can restore you after drug use. And it will be the most powerful story that the world has ever heard. But understand, Abraham had to pay 13 years of his life. But we need the next generation to know he'll restore and heal an Ishmael. He'll birth an Isaac, but they're not the same. And if you're young and you've got a second chance, even if you're not young, don't let this moment pass without saying, God, I want an Isaac. I want a word. I want what only you can do. And here's the key. Abraham stood before God with a wife, with a sister wife. You got to get there. If you have ears, hear this. And, a, and an Ishmael that was 13 years old. His Ishmael was a teenage brat. And he dealt with it. Your Ishmael, you're going to go through seasons before you're able to let your Isaac deal with it. And the faith that Abraham had to stood before God with a 13-year-old Ishmael and a hormonal Ishmael and an up and down pimple faced Ishmael and say God I thank you for what you've done but I stand here saying God do what only you can do and give me your promise I believe I've got another chance and if you believe you've got another chance I don't care how old and how irritable and how annoying your Ishmael is the Bible says that Abraham stood before God and said I believe I believe I believe and it says in Romans it says in Romans for the promise that he would be heir of the world was not to Abraham we don't got time I want to pray this over some people. If, if, if this word is for you, just come up here. I'll pray to will be up here. I know, just be bold. If, if you've got an Ishmael, we all got Ishmaels. If you've got an Ishmael that you need God to come help restore, come up here. If you need an Isaac, just come up here. If, if you sense this whole message, just, just step out of your seat and just kind of drift up. Our prayer team will be up here. I want to read this over you. Romans 14, 13. For the promise that he would be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith, believing believing for if, if those who are that law of our heirs of the law of faith is made void and the promise of no effect because the law brings wrath for where there is law there is no transgression therefore it is of faith start to believe start to believe start to believe come on some of you need to get up here just just be obedient just get on up here we're gonna pray in a second we'll get out of here just get on up here young people get up here Young people, get up here. God wants to plan his word. God's going to give you fresh faith. 
we're not, it's, it's not normal, this is not business as usual. This is not business as usual. I know this service is tearing, just give me one more minute. I have made you the father of many nations. God's about to give you his word. I'm so thankful for God's healing over Ishmael's, but God's about to plant his word. Get ready, get ready. He's about to plant his word. Hear me. I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of him who he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, against all odds, he had an Ishmael. He's got some healing. His body is dead. Sarah's womb is dry. But he stood there and said, God, I believe. I believe. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body. You don't consider your situation right now. You consider the word. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. Strengthened in faith. Strengthened in faith. The reason we get tempted is we get weak and we give in. God's about to give you strength, not through money, not through team, not through people, but by faith. Faith in his word is about to give you strength. Here we go. Here we go. Just, just let God right now through his word right now restore the Ishmael and birth an Isaac. Let him restore the Ishmael and birth an Isaac. And God's about to give you strength through faith. Your faith is about to give you strength in Jesus' name. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Strengthen your body. Strengthen your mind. Come on, church. Here we go. Here we go. He's about to give you strength. Right now, right now. Receive the word. 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 Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. Believe. 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 Hey. Come on, just the drums. Just the drums. Just the drums. Just the drums. Here we go. Here we go. 30 more seconds. Let the word of God right now, right now, believe. Believe. Believe your life is about to come into rhythm. Your life is about to gain traction. God's about to birth an Isaac. And that strength. It's going to come. He's overcome. He's overcome. He's overcome. He's, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. He's overcome. He's overcome. He's overcome. He's overcome. He's overcome. He's overcome. Jesus, he's overcome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just receive, just receive that strength. Just receive that strength. Jesus. Come on, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Him some praise. Has God spoken to you? Has God spoken to you? Has God spoken to you? Before we leave this place, right now. Right now. Believe. What is it? What is it? I believe we live in a critical time right now where your Ishmael is mocking your Isaac. I was even talking to some people this week. Is it too late? Is it too late? All that is, is your Ishmael mocking your Isaac. 
just say, Jesus, I know it's crazy. Because I'm crazy. Got my 13-year-old Ishmael. Ishmael, shut up. I'm trying to hear God. He's just 100 years old. Sarah's womb dry. And you got to believe. Just take 10 seconds to do it personally. Just I believe. What is it? What is it? Is it family? Is it money? Is it business? Just believe it. Is it a house? Is it a bigger house? What is it? What is it? Believe. Is it your family? Is it purpose? Is it calling? You just want to be fulfilled? You just want more so you can bless? What is it? Don't, don't listen to the devil tell you that it's prideful. What, what is it that God is speaking? It's very difficult because of the Ishmael. Because he's mocking the Isaac. So that's why we have to get back to I believe. What is it that God's speaking? What promise is it? I hope you heard me this morning and no one is under condemnation in this room. Because God says, bring Ishmael home. I'm going to teach you how to take care of it. Heal. Restore. And I'm going to birth something new. Powerful. Kingdom promise in your life. If you want some more prayer, come on up here. I love you so much. I pray you're encouraged. I pray there's clarity. Young people, pray for each other. Pray for each other. Lay hands on each other. Pray the Holy Spirit fills. If you want to find someone in this room, just pray for them. If you need some prayer, come on up here. We love you. Have an incredible week. We love you so much. If you want some prayer, come on up. Thank you, Jesus.